What does an instructional designer do? This is an important question. In the corporate world, in higher education, in the military, a lot of people end up working with an instructional designer, and it's important to know what an instructional designer does. So in this presentation, I'll kind of talk about the processes and the tools that an instructional designer uses as they create instructional materials. So first of all, an instructional designer designs instruction. So here's our instructional designer here. His goal is to create instructional materials. But he uses specific tools to do that. And there are two different types. The first are abstract tools. Okay, and the second is physical tools. And we'll talk about what each of these different types of tools are. So first, abstract tools. There are two main types of abstract tools that an instructional designer will use in his work. The first is instructional theory, and the next is instructional design process. Instructional theory is a compilation of a body of knowledge that lets us know what works in instruction. So there's a lot of research that's been done over decades. This research can be compiled and distilled down into key principles and key strategies for creating instruction that will actually work and help students learn. And this is called instructional theory. Uh, instructional designers also use the instructional design process when they're creating instruction. Very important key steps and phases that the instructional designer goes through. Now these are both abstract concepts and so it's something that they're thinking about the entire time they're working with other people to create instruction. The other part is physical tools. Now these can be anything that's a physical object. So for example, I've got some examples here, a learning management system or a multimedia development tool or even a pen and paper those can act as these physical tools that the designer uses. So the instructional designer takes these tools and technologies and he uses them to create instructional materials. Let me give you an example of how this has worked for me. As an instructional designer working at Utah State University, I developed a unit of instruction that taught about microevolution. And so I'll let me show you how I use these abstract and physical tools to create the instructional materials. So first, the abstract tools. The first thing I did was I used a specific instructional theory, and this was Merrill's first principles of instruction. This theory allowed me to uh, use a task-centered strategy and use some very specific instructional strategies. I also used the pebble in the pond model for instructional design. This is a process that helps you walk through organizing and creating the content in a specific way. So those are the abstract tools I used as I was creating this instruction. I also used physical tools to create the instruction. One of these was a Camtasia, which is a tool that allows you to create uh, video presentations, kind of like the one you're seeing right now. I used Blackboard Vista to house the instructional materials. And we finally ended up with Flash-based module that taught people about microevolution. So the thing that's interesting about instructional design is that it's actually a, becomes even more complex than what you've seen here. So what an instructional designer often does when they're working in in a in business or in industry or uh, in the military or in higher education or in any really any setting is they work often with a subject matter expert and this is a person who has a lot of knowledge about the specific subject but doesn't necessarily know how to teach it effectively and so the instructional designer and the subject matter expert have to communicate back and forth and really figure out what the content is analyze it in a specific way and then create instruction based on that analysis now it becomes even more complex for the instructional designer who's working in a context or an environment that really makes things even more complex. So for example, depending on what organization you're working in, the goals of that organization could have a very deep influence on how you design instruction. Also, each organization has specific rules and policies that might affect how instruction is designed in a drastic way. The division of labor is important as well. If do you, Does the designer do all of the work and create all of the instruction themselves? Or do they have multimedia developers who do a lot of the other different types of work? How it's divided can really affect this in design as well. And then finally, what's the community like? What are the communication norms? What are the cultural norms? These things can really also influence instructional design. So really, at the most basic level, instructional design is a designer using tools to create instructional materials. I hope this presentation has been helpful and that it's helped you to understand a little bit more about what an instructional designer does.